Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another week and another show. We are flying through these. The weeks are going by in the lockdown and today we are joined again by a very, very special guest. Welcome along everybody in the chat. If you want to drop in a hello, just say hello in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook, if you want to get involved in the live chat that's on screen, you can go over to our YouTube, just search Fab Rugby and you can ask the person that is joining us a question. Now, you may have seen in the last five minutes who it is, if you've been following us on our channels. 
So, I shall just give the gentleman a call and I'll introduce him. Hi, Matthew. Welcome, Gregor. How are we doing? Welcome, everybody. If you drop a hello in the chat, if you've got any questions for this individual, I will ask them. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit like on this video. And if you want to subscribe, feel free to subscribe. There is also a donation button, but don't feel like you have to do that either. So, let's get this guest on. Let me just give him a call and uh, let me uh, make sure we're all good. So, just bear me a second while I just give him a call. Hello, 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 hello. Just spare me one sec. Just spare me one. Just yeah. Just spare me one second, and I'll bring you into the chat. So let me just make this into here. Okay, guys. So joining us today, Lewis Ludlam. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm you loving okay? the hair, by the way. Ah, uh, so. Long story short, uh, it was for a rubbish rubbish hair quiz. So, and I decided to go the extra mile, and now I'm kind of stuck with it, and I'm I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, it's either shave it or grow it. So I'm just kind of in no, this. Grow it out. <laughs> You're like a red Jedward or something. <laughs> As someone said to me, Sharon Osborne the other day, that, and I thought, yeah, yeah, okay, I can take that. So, how have you yeah. been anyway? You keeping well? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been interesting, interesting time for sure. Obviously little bit different change of lifestyle for, for pretty much everyone really but um yeah trying to trying to keep myself as as busy as possible but um re really looking forward to, to sort of going back and, and cracking on now more than more than anything so we spoke uh, it was pretty much a year ago now and it, it was quite a, a thing for me personally with fab it's the first actually interview i did with fab last year now i look i look back at that the last year for how we've grown and i think fab, fab's we've had a good year of fab but then i look at you and i think what a year what an unbelievable year if we if we when we sat sat back then at the end of last season and you you were just about to face exeter in the uh semi-finals of the premiership what what a what a mental I, i'm not going to say it's all down to me the success stories but I, i'm just saying <laughs> yeah. i'm the good luck charm obviously down um, to fab rugby <laughs> that's it it's all down to fab rugby uh so let uh, what i wanted to start with was firstly you had a trip to bali uh, i think it was at bali you went to with george yeah it was um george and, and alex moon as well so um, what was said on that holiday then come on like, what it's for it's because you've all now been in the england camp and i don't suppose when you went back on that when you're on that holiday that was discussed at all it was no, not at all. I mean, that for us on that trip, that didn't seem further away at all. So we basically, um, I'd gone in as travelling reserves to the Saxon week to cover for Teamana, who was having his baby at the time. Um, and I knew I wasn't playing. It was just there, sort of. It came up, Dallas being the, the forwards coach on, on the on the on the camp sort of said, Oh, do you fancy coming along and training, showing your face? Obviously Eddie's gonna be knocking around a little bit as well, so it'd be good to train for you. And I was like, I was actually on the on the train to London for an end of season social. And I was like, <laughs> Well yeah, might might as well might might as well come down and, and got the train train back straight away. Um went straight down to camp and um yeah yeah Eddie sort of just pulled me aside and said, oh, keep working hard over the off season, and I thought, okay, yeah, we'll do. And kept kept up my training in Bali, and the, the boys sort of kept me honest while I was there. And it wasn't until we sort of got a message on, well, I think it was a, about five five or six days in, saying uh, an email saying you've been invited to a rugby world world cup warm up camp, and it was just a bit like, well, we we, we sort of expected to be, be wishing our summer away and obviously staying fit but like enjoying ourselves and, and, and cracking on with next season and sort of the season coming to a close and from, from going to thinking that it was over for us that season to sort of having to switch my focus to preparing for, preparing for a World Cup was a bit of a bit of a bit of a crazy one really and and, and not one I, I really really expected up until up until getting on the getting on the plane really that's yeah that's even crazier than I thought it was. So that's that's incredible. So you you kind of even during the bar bars and stuff, it was kind of like not not really in your mind that you could potentially make the squad or or you could have a, sh a shot at this. It was just going down there just to fill in sort of thing. Yeah, not at all. Um, there was I think about a week before the bar bars team was selected, I Dan sort of pulled me inside and said um, um, I, I, I basically hadn't made the cut, and there was a few lads who were ahead of me and. 
in England's eyes. So they they were going to go ahead. Um, so I thought, okay, I saw the, the end of the season for me then. We'll, we'll crack on, um, book, book my holiday. And then obviously got the call from Dallas. And I thought, oh, I might as well go down and show my face. It's actually almost, almost booked the holiday for the um, Wednesday. So I think if I left it another two, two or three two or three days, then um, I would have been, been been on a plane already and, and not, not be able to, to take part. So wow. um, yeah, to, from, from going from going to uh, just knocking around on a, on a training week as traveling reserve and sort of, sort of covering for for a few boys to, to to sort of being involved in it was was a, was I think the, the craziest thing thing for me really. What was it? What was it like being in camp for the first time then? Because uh, what firstly, how is it different from being at the Saints? Is it is it massively different the international level, like the training and stuff? But how did you feel being in camp for the first time? Were you kind of like a bit like, oh, what am I doing here? Sort of thing. Or, yeah, like, I was. We're just, I'm I was take every chance. Bricking it in all honesty. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was bricking it because. Um, I'd obviously been on camps with age groups and stuff, but for me, I think b- b- being a, sol- a, b- a breakthrough season for me as such, I, I, I sort of went to that camp thinking, hey, half these lads are not going to have a c- clue who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I, sort of, I, w- I walked, into the, walked into the room and obviously you see the big faces knocking around there and it's like, I mean, it's my first season here and the thing made me nervous. I was like, "Oh, they're not really going to invite me in or accept me because I've been knocking around on the Premiership circuit for too long." Um, but I, I think immediately that the thing that stood out for me was that they made me as as, as welcome as possible. Um, I think the difference from being at club to there is um, it, it everyone is everyone is full on. There's a, obviously you get young lads at the club who are coming through and experience to it, but you're amongst guys who've been doing it for for years and a master of their trade. That they're world class in their positions and um, their, their preparation and their, their mindset. Everyone's on the on the same page. They're they're, they're, they're proving themselves almost, and it's and it's a tw- it's a twenty four seven thing as well. So to make the shift from when you're at a club, you can. It, it was it was almost like oh do do what do what I do at the club and then you can go home and you can switch off when you're there it's you're up at six seven in the morning doing bacon and eggs upper body circuits and you you've got to be switched on until six pm in the evening when when everything sort of finishes and then, and then again you know it's gonna you're gonna get up and do the same thing the next day as well so that 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 change in intensity was the the, the thing that I had to to really get used to. Um, but I, I, th- I think once you you're up and running with that, it's a uh, it it transfers w- when you go back to the club as well. So when you go back to the club, you, you know how much you can fit into a day, how much you can how much you can prepare to to sort of, to sort of go out and pre- prepare the best as, as possible at the weekend. There's there's loads of stuff you can be doing at home and and, and before you go into the club as well to to, to best prepare yourself. So have you have, would you say you've changed then your day to day kind of since before going to the World Cup, like kind of on the, like before you even get to your camp to how you now post World Cup, we'll get on to the World Cup in a second, but have you changed your day to day, like food and everything and your lifestyle at all? Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it's, um, not that I, I, I didn't want it before, but you, you, you get a taste of it and you, you get a taste of, of, of what it takes to, to, to really, to really be the, to, to be the best, be, to best, you, the best you can. So, um, to, to to see the preparation it took to get us as a team to a World Cup final, it, it, it's not a, it's not a, it wasn't an easy thing to do at all. I mean, a lot of people I think see the performances and they're like, oh, they're a good group of la- players and been well together. But the, the amount we sort of graft in. Two or well, three, three months, I think it was pre World Cup, to, to to get to that point was was unbelievable, really. And 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 I and I sort of tried to take parts of that preparation as back to Northampton Saints as as much as I could. Yeah, I was just gonna. If you've got any comments in the chat, or if you want any questions for Lewis, drop them in the chat. Uh, Cadino says, "Lewis, you're my favourite player. Keep up the good work." Uh, Freddie's just saying hello. So, just drop any comments you might have in the chat, guys, and I'll ask Lewis. I've got some stuff that I want to ask him. We're just going to talk a little bit about. We're going to move on to the World Cup actually now. So, 
when you when you were kind of you 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 made your debut for Wales against Wales, um, and you've kind of there was quite a lot of attention around you after that game. I, I can imagine that was a bit of a was it a bit of a shock because obviously with the national anthem, it was suddenly like you were almost thrown into the limelight, weren't you? With, 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 around that kind of everything, kind of everyone was talking about you, became a a buzz thing about it. So it was at that stage you think. I'm, I've got a shot here at the World Cup, or were you just kind of like still? What when when did it suddenly become a point of I'm going to go to the I'll, I'll, I'll keep working, I'll get to the World Cup, or was it just kind of like, I'll just take each day as it is? No, just I think the, the moment I sort of realised was the moment we we arrived on the day we were getting on the plane, and I was like, well, actually we're we're going to a, a World Cup here. It's like <laughs> I sort of I sort of made my made my debut and thought, okay, I just sort of thought I was going to get blooded for maybe um, post-World Cup um, involvements or, or or maybe in the future to see if I can to, to sort of um, to, to, sort, to sort of punch at that punch at that level um, so I mean I wasn't it wasn't even meant to start that game I think Unders was it Unders? Yeah I think Underhill went down um, the, day, the, the day before the game in training so I was meant to be on the bench and I thought I'd get 20 minutes and that'd be me capped and, and ready to sort of go for, for next season maybe and I'll keep working hard and help the rest of the team prepare for because those lot are going up off to a World Cup. So <laughs> it wasn't until I got on the plane where I was a bit like, you know, I'm actually going to a World Cup here. And then even when you're there, you never expect to be involved in a in a World Cup game until, in, until it actually happens. And I think that's probably why, for me, I think I... I performed well at the World Cup personally because it was like I, t- I sort of did just take everything in my stride. I didn't really um, feel feel the pressure of it. I, it's, it's, it's the strangest thing for me because it was like um, these are the biggest games I've ever ever would have played in in my life, and it's the most relaxed I've ever been. I think partly because I, we know how hard we work in pre- preparation, and, and secondly, in the back of my head, I was like. Well, I was in I was in Bali before. I was was never <laughs> never really meant to be here. I might as well just rip in and and, and give it a crack. So um, yeah, that that was a, the the beauty of it beauty of it for me really. It must have felt a bit dreamy at times because it just happened like one thing after another, and it, it was just the way it all came about. A lot, obviously the pain and that you're going through in training, but I, it was almost like um, a st- I remember as it, as we were going through it, the stages kind of you would do this. It was like, are oh, you in this squad? You were in, and it was suddenly it was like, okay, you you could be in the oh Lewis is in the World Cup. Oh, is it the World Cup? Yeah. And then it's, it was a really crazy couple of months um to kind of for, for living it just as a fan so i can only imagine what it must have been like for yourself i'm just going to read some of the comments in the chat uh just sort of just come in shadow the puppy says who is your favorite to play with uh sorry player to, to play with uh or in the squad generally um at northampton probably tay tay and woody in the back row yeah. um i just i love playing with with those two more than more than anything really just um, they're, they're proper warriors in, in, in the back row, and, and, and knowing you've got two other lads that are just going to go to go, go, go at it with you, go through go through the trenches with you on on the pitch is um, is a is a beautiful thing to have, really, especially in the back row where it's so much about confrontation and physicality. To so have those two by your side going going at it is um, is is a good thing. I think probably on uh, at England, I've been playing with um, unders underhill since we were under eighteen, so. Um, we had a bit of a gap, I think five, six years where we hadn't played with each other and then to go out at, at Twickenham and, 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 and sort of replicate what we did at age group and, and, and run out with him um, was, a, was, a, was a special thing as well. Just a couple more comments coming in. Christian says, one of my favourite moments of recent rugby years is your passion during the anthem. It was incredible. Uh, Gregor said, what, what was England's thoughts on where they could finish in the World Cup? So, were they expect? Eddie was obviously giving up a really positive message before the World Cup, and was that kind of was that the same in camp? Did you kind of feel like right, we could we could we could do this, we can win this, or was it kind of like right, we'll just take each game as it comes, and we'll just see where we go? Yeah, that was there was there was no um, doubt that we had that we had the sort of the sort of potential in the team to to go and do it, and nothing was talked about other than winning the World Cup. And that was the focus from right from day one, right from the beginning. Um, no one, I, th- I, I think, in training accepted anything less than 
standards that would would sort of win us win us a World Cup, and um, I think that was emulated in our in our training as well. We knew where we wanted to be, and we knew we we needed to train as hard as we possibly could every session, every day, um, to, to, to sort of to sort of get that goal. So in in terms of expectation, there nobody wanted any less, and nobody thought about any any less either. It's just a a, a shame in the end of the result that. Um, the, the, the journey of it all was just was something I, I, I wouldn't take wouldn't take back to. So what did what did you actually think of Japan? Because uh, obviously you had quite a lot of disruptions over there with uh, the uh, typhoon and other bits. And what did you actually think to the place itself? And did you get much free time away from the game when you were out there? Yeah, oh, I loved it. Oh, I loved it to pieces. Um, I, I, I said as soon as we came back, I can see myself lo- moving out there at some point. Just the the, the the culture of of the place and um, the the people more than anything I think how polite and and how clean and and and, and how much pride they have for for their country um, in general was was, was something I've, I've really loved out there and um, yeah I'd, I'd love to go back out there and and hopefully live out there at, at some point at some point in my life really. What was what's been the most surreal moment then since since all this since all the change to being an England international? What what's been the surrealest thing you've done or been involved in where you've gone? Oh wow, this is I've come a long way in a year. The, the, the strangest thing actually it wasn't it wasn't a rugby experience. I got invited down to um, my childhood cl- a childhood football club, Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, um, and I got I got the email saying, oh, they they want to get you down to the ground and. Present you a pitch on the uh, present you a um, a shirt on the pitch and, wow. and at half time do an interview and <laughs> I mean f- 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 football is what I, what I grew up with really so um, to to walking out in front of I think it was seventy thousand people and doing an interview and be presented with my shirt with my name on on the back of the, the Spurs pitch I was like yeah we've actually achieved something here because. It, it came soon after the World Cup, and I think when we got back from the World Cup, we were straight into a rugby season again. So you don't have time to think about how how far you're coming in, in rugby or whatever. It was literally straight straight back to task. So to go down to Spurs and sort of being recognised by by my childhood club as, as as someone who's achieved anything was was the most the most surreal moment for for sure. That yeah, that's. Yeah, incredible, absolutely incredible. So then we move forward a bit to this season, and we'll we'll continue on with England. Just uh, we'll talk about England Scotland this season. It was quite a memorable game for many different wrong reasons. Uh, partly the weather, uh, but it was also memorable for a win. Um, I just wanted to ask what it was actually like playing at Murrayfield. Um, was that possibly the most hostile it's been in a you played in in your career? Yeah. <laughs> without a doubt, yeah, I could, I could, yeah, I could say yes without a doubt. That, um, yeah, it was it was special actually. Um, in a, in a way, I sort of enjoyed the the hostility of it all. <laughs> um, we we got off the bus and everyone shouting at you and shouting abuse at you, and you're like, yeah, all right, this is a, a, a proper game, proper game at it. And it was like, you in, in the back of your head, you're like, okay, we're in Scotland, loads of Scots screaming at us no one really liked us here let's let's go out and sort of cause, cause an upset at Murrayfield and to, 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 to sort of for them to lay down lay down the challenges fans and 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 have that hostility towards us just sort of added um added added fuel to the occasion for me and that's something I, I I really really enjoyed so a bit further on the, on the English stuff I just want to talk about the back row now the probably if we look at the whole if we look at England as a team and we also look at the depth in the positions probably the back row is or particularly the flankers are the richest in the whole the whole of the team it's it, the talent coming through in that area so I just wanted to ask about that is that what's striving or uh, well, what's driving you to be so competitive for that is it kind of giving you the fight like I want that shirt so much more than all you guys so I'm going to get every chance I'm getting because I read an article about you leaving your kit out after the World Cup or something and you were going to just to basically keep the motivation so you don't get forgotten, so you don't forget how hard you work for us. I mean, if, just a bit of an insight into that, into like your level of competitiveness on the on keeping the jersey. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a sort of strange situation to be in because um, on on camp with the England back row, everyone gets on. I, I, I think the the back row is probably the the closest unit that, that 
as, as, as a whole, um, some, some, some of my some of my closest mates in, in, that, in that back row, but to sort of have that level of competition and wanting each other to do better as well was um, such an incredibly healthy thing for us as, a, as individuals to, to improve because we, we, at the same time, we wanted to push each other and we wanted to get better. We wanted each other to get better as well. There was, I mean, I was getting tips from Underhill and, and Curry and Billy and, and, and I was passing on what I, what I thought would be valuable to them as well. So for us to sort of pull in a collective direction, yet being at it with each, with each other was, um, was an interesting thing, but something that, that you, you can't take back. It's, it's invaluable. Um, the, the, the same, same at, at the club in, in Northampton with Tay and, and, and Woody. It's like we'll go to go to battle with each other at the weekend, and but we're, we're scrapping in the week to, to 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 get better with each other. So um, to, to have that level of competition anywhere in, in any sport, any job, I think is is such a such a healthy thing, and and and, and that sort of your, your growth period when when you are competitive and you are wanting to get better. So just uh, let's move away from rugby now. We've talked, talked twenty minutes about rugby now. So how are you keeping motivated in the lockdown? And how, how is it a challenge to kind of keep motivated with the training and stuff? Or have you have you gone got into a good routine with it? Yeah, I think routines are the main thing for me. Um, in the beginning, it was I think the hardest thing is you you don't know we don't know still when we're going to be back playing rugby. No. properly and and in, in and in if that's going to be in empty stadiums or whether that's going to be back at home with franklin's garden so um that, that was the most difficult thing to come to terms with but i think now i've sort of got myself into a, a, a sort of good routine of, of of doing stuff doing the bits that i need to do and, and and using this this period of time to to grow i think um there's never going to be another opportunity mid-season to Get your body right, get your fitness right, and and get your mind right, ready to to, to go again and 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 go at it again for the for the last chunk of the season. So it's been a it's been a it's been a weird. But it's been a I think at times a, a sort of nice change to, to sort of shift my focus to to, to really get myself right. Um, it's the first time I've, I've I've done sessions on my own, um, but yeah, I've got my girlfriend who is 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 who's quite into her fitness as well, who's keeping me busy and, and, and keeping me motivated to, to go, out and go out and runs as well. So have you been learning any new skills though during lockdown? Are we expecting to hear like a Lewis Ludlam album coming out? Any like singing albums or uh, have we got any new skills that you've picked up so far? Yeah, definitely no, definitely no singing. I'm missing, I'm go hate my singing. But, um, I've, I've got, um, I've got a smoker now okay um, seems like the the standard rugby <laughs> player thing to do is get a barbecue and smoker and get get all manly with it um <laughs> so yeah that, that, that's been keeping me busy i think i've had barbecue every day this week oh um, nice nice um that and and the, and the dog who's who's only 12 12 weeks old is keeping me keeping me busy as well what dog have you got I've got a Vizsla. Oh, lovely. Really nice. So, yeah, lots of energy to get me out of the house. <laughs> How are you keeping in touch with the lads then? Is it, have you kind of got, uh, you've just still got WhatsApp groups kind of chatting to each other or is it kind of playing Fortnite or whatever video games together? How are you keeping in touch with the lads? Yeah, a lot, a lot of PlayStation with each other. <laughs> uh, especially especially us, us younger lads. Um, Cobus Reinhardt, because I think he's the oldest member of the PS4 squad. Who's the, um, most, who's the most competitive gamer in this squad? Oh, uh, Alex Mitchell. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You can't tell him he's uh, he's doing anything wrong in a game either. I think <laughs> a few of the lads get a bit a bit upset with him because he's always wants to, to pass the blame. But um, yeah, Mitch, Mitch loves his, his PlayStation. Um, but I, I think pretty much all of the lads are, are on PlayStation as well. So it's quite, been, been quite a nice... Uh, it's been quite nice to get together and have a chat with them as well and, um, and and stay in contact that way. Just got a couple of questions that just come in. Um, where are we? Uh, this one from Christian said, if you could have chosen a team to meet in the final that wasn't South Africa, who would you have liked England to have played? Was there anybody you kind of that you haven't played yet for England as well that you might want to play? Uh, I think two of that immediately of a New Zealand, obviously, if that would have been possible to, to sort of have that performance and, and play against that team in the final would have been, been special. And I think the other the other team is Japan as well. I think they're a, a nation that's come a long way on the on the rugby front and for 
them as the hosting nation to, to 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 play against in the final would be would be something really really special as well. Uh, this one's from Ewan says, Lewis, who would you like to see replace Cobus at the Saints next season? Um, I think Alex, Alex Mitchell would be, uh, but I don't, I don't think we need to look outside too much. Um, We've just, just signed Sam, really... Sam, Sam James, I think. It was, so was yeah, this... he looks like a, yeah, I've heard really good things about him as well. Um, but yeah, I think Cobus has passed on a lot of his knowledge to, to Mitch as well. Mitch is a quality player who's sort of been involved with the England stuff a little bit too. So um, to really see him come through and 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 step up to to, to Cobus's position would be um, would, would be an exciting thing as well. I mean, we're we're quite blessed, I think, in, in the scrum half position at the moment with um, Henry Taylor as well, and he's, he's, he's been quality for us. So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're blessed in that position. I think hopefully those those two lads are that that healthy competition to to push each other on and. And those two can sort of fight for that nine shirt, nine shirt as much as possible. So, Fave, uh, I've got one more question coming and I'll ask my final one. Is This one's from David. It says, how does how does playing rugby make you feel? Oh, awesome. Uh, there's, uh, there is literally no feeling like it when you're, you, when, you're, when you're out on the pitch, especially at home, Franklin's Gardens. It's like you feel five kg heavier, <laughs> you feel five inches taller, um, you get your wind, the wind at your back, you just feel... Un- unstoppable at times. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a really special feeling to sort of hear hear the crowd as well and 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 know the you've got fourteen boys boys next to you are gonna gonna give it everything to to turn over the other team. So um, yes, it's, it's just a special thing for me. It's always an emotional occasion um, with loads going on during the game, before the game, um, and after the game as well. And um, but yeah, like I said, no no feeling like it. So, final question from me now, and the final question uh, for the show today. So, we we spoke a year ago, and your life went like that. So, what are we expecting in the next year? Then, are we are we going to have like Sir Lewis Ludlam, the way the rate you went last year? Okay, <laughs> what, what 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 what's the goals for the next season then for you? Uh, trophies, trophies, sure. Um, yeah, hopefully, Premiership trophies. Um, hopefully, European trophies if that goes ahead. Um, Really, really, really want to be be winning something as a as a team now. We want, want silverware. That's always been been the goal, and um, I think over the next two or three years, with with the squad we've got and um, the, the the amount of young lads we've got coming through, and, and and the older lads as well, there's no reason why why we can't win a win a premiership. There's no reason why we can't. Um, it challenge challenge the best at, at what they do. So um, yeah, it's a really really exciting time I think for for us as a club and for us to be able to get some get some silverware silverware down at the gardens is is a goal and, and, and something I've, I've dreamed of for a long time. So hopefully we can sort of achieve that in the in the, in the next few years. Brilliant, brilliant guys. So people are just sending questions in the chat. The, those questions have actually been answered. So if you watch back the stream, you can catch all those uh, those questions that have been answered. So, Lewis, thank you very much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure and great to catch up with you again. Absolutely. No, thank you. Look, it's good to, to, good to speak to someone. And look after, yeah, look after yourself, and uh, I'm sure I'll see you at the gardens very soon. Absolutely. Right, take Cheers, care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Catch you a bit. Bye.